Thank you, Susan. It's now 25 minutes to nine. Grimly, inevitably necessary. That is how Michael Gove describes new, tougher restrictions on everyday life planned for once the national lockdown in England is lifted. In a long essay in this morning's Times, he warns MPs not to fall for what he calls comfortable evasions, that things are somehow now different, or to put their constituencies ahead of what he calls the national interest. Scientists have told ministers, he writes, that without these measures, the NHS would be physically overwhelmed with every bed, every ward occupied. In a moment, we'll discuss the modelling that underlies those warnings with Professor Neil Ferguson. First, let's hear from one of the leading sceptics about lockdowns, the former Supreme Court judge, Lord Sumption. Good morning to you. Good morning. You read the article now, and it's an article written by a man who at least presents himself as being sceptical about lockdown, being a freedom lover as you are. Is there anything you read that persuades you? I've seen the article and I'm not really impressed. Uh, The NHS has been underfunded for many years and we entered this crisis with an intensive care capacity which was among the lowest in Europe. At this time of year, hospitalizations for respiratory diseases go up anyway and in a bad year, the NHS habitually cannot cope. But we have never previously regarded that as a reason for making it illegal for people uh, to take risks with their health. Ah, but Mr Goof then writes, doesn't he, these same decisions have been taken where the funding is different for the health service in France, in Austria, in Ireland, in Netherlands, in Germany, and even in Sweden, which was long held up by people with your views as an example of doing things in a different way. Well, Sweden's measures are very much milder than those of the other countries that you mentioned. Yes, it is perfectly true that the example of other countries has given political cover uh, to the government to take steps that it wouldn't otherwise have taken. But the problem is that there is a lack of rational thinking everywhere. There is, in this country, a particular problem which underly- undermines Michael Gove's article, which is the problem about the information that the government puts out. Some of the statistics used to justify the lockdown have been extremely selective and tendentious. The most serious case recently, which was used to justify the current lockdown, resulted in criticism from the UK Statistics Authority. This was the claim of a possible 4,000 peak. Yes, but I think I I think Mr Gove, and I want to give you the chance to reply to this, Mr Gove in his article has people like you in mind, where he says, well, let's look at the alternative then, he says, a sort of, as he described it, Sweden that never was. And in his article, he asked this question, How practically, if you were to try and lock down those people who were vulnerable, how practically could we do it? How, he says, could we ensure that every older citizen, every diabetic, everyone with an underlying condition or impaired immune system was perfectly insulated from all contact with others for months to come? Would it be 5 million, 10 million? Would we stop all visits by carers and mixing of generations? What's your answer to that? My answer to that is, of course, it's not enforceable. None of these things are enforceable. None of them are without uh, a strong measure of public willingness to comply. Uh, And the fact is that the public is becoming increasingly unwilling to comply for reasons that, to me, uh, to be pretty sound. Uh, Many of the people who are vulnerable will wish to take the risks with their eyes open. The government should certainly make sure that they are aware of the risks. But if an old person wishes to enjoy what, what years remain to him or her, Uh, and take risks with their health, that is actually a matter for them. And the fact that the government cannot send policemen into every home to police it uh, doesn't seem to me uh, to justify locking down very large numbers of people, the great majority of the population, who are going to suffer uh, no serious ill effects and certainly are not going to die. Lord Sumption, thank you very much for joining us.